morning から言ったらいいんですかね。Uh, this is Vice Admiral Fumi Oda, a retired、uh, maritime s e r v a n t force.、Uh, Chinese reclamation in the South China Sea has been developing significantly. Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi, stated at the Southeast Asian Summit Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, in August that it had halted land reclamation effort. This is, however, a deception which Sun Tzu stated in the first chapter of his Art of War. China does not want a direct confrontation with the United States. But want to expand her sphere of influence. Therefore, China has been and will be making incremental approach, so called salami slicing strategy. Not only Xi Jinping's statement at the 70th anniversary victory of Japan Day, but also the latest Chinese defense white paper stated that China will never seek hegemony. Or expansion, but this is another deception. In order to cope against Chinese strategy, we have to avoid a competition neither China versus United States nor China versus Japan. At the last global <coughs> Boston Global Forum on April 20, I made two proposals. I'd like to restate those. The first, all maritime nations should build together, bind together, and create a strong hedge in order to counter Chinese maritime aggression. We have to make a competition, China against the world as a whole or international community. Therefore, not only the United States and Japan, but also other states such as Australia, India, Vietnam, and Philippines should make a collective naval vessel passage within 12 nautical miles from Chinese artificial islands in the South China Sea. I'm expecting the US leadership on this matter. If we do not Demonstrate our freedom of navigation right. Chinese artificial islands and adjacent waters become de facto Chinese territory by international customary law, and China will establish her air defense identification zone in the South China Sea near future. China wants to create de facto territory before. Obama administration will be terminated. My second proposal was that we have to conduct an offset strategy which demonstrates transparency and counters China's disinformation campaign. We should disclose to the international community by social media the truth of what China has been actually doing. This is very effective because China always wants to save her face in the nature of her behavior and therefore may correct what China is doing according to what has been disclosed. What Chinese readers mentioned, such as halted reclamation and never seek hegemony or expansion. Were completely false. We have to keep effort to bring what China is actually doing to light. We should not trust what Chinese leaders said and what China is really doing. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon.、Uh, my name is Mitoji Abunaka, the former Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs of Japan, and now currently I'm teaching at、uh, the University of the School, Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto. Now I'm very happy to join the, the, the discussion, the conversation, 
Uh, unfortunately, I can't be on time, but uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about how I see about South China Sea and East China Sea. Uh, when I was, uh, learned that the United States is going to send the ships uh, within the 12 miles of uh, the islands that uh, the China is uh, drilling and reclamations underway, I thought it's a good idea. The reason why is, of course, uh, when the, the China a few, few years ago announced its uh, air defense identification zones, the United States sent uh, the flu, flu B-52 immediately without notifying uh, the China. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, it nullified the announcement of China. But this time, the idea came that the U.S. might send a ship within 12 miles uh, zones, and yet when China reacted very sharply, opposing that, then U.S. desert or somehow uh, not quite sure what the U.S. is going to do. That's not really a very, very good idea for U.S. to do so. Once you have idea to do so, and then you have to be very far. But of course, uh, I know uh, that uh, you can't have a confrontation with China. Of course not. And Japan as well. Certainly that uh, we should explore ways how to live peacefully and harmoniously with China. And uh, we have a pretty good idea about that with regard to East China Sea. And of course uh, South China Sea and north of that East China Sea. If I may first uh, a bit about what happened in East China Sea in 2008. Well, seven years ago, you're talking about old stories, and yet this is very, very new, even today. And the agreement is, uh, as you might see uh, in that map that I'll show you, uh, the map is about Japan China Joint Exploration Agreement. And uh, yes, indeed, in 2008, we agreed to do the joint exploration of natural gas uh, in the seabed. We talk about, yes, let's make the East China Sea a sea of peace, cooperation and friendship. And as a first step, we agreed, let's say, find out the area, which is very, very small, uh, the, uh, the circled the, the area, what it is called Japan-China Joint Exploration Site. And key point here is that China used to say, yes, because of a continental shelf extension, their waters go as far as Okinawa Trough, meaning that entire East China Sea is actually the China water. We say it's no way. The UN uh, law, uh, the treaty, says that when there are two countries, you must negotiate and find a kind of a mutually agreed sort of uh, demarcations. And normally we say it is medium line, so separated in, into half the waters. What actually happened in 2008 is, of course, it is only the first step. And yet that sort of uh, the agreed upon area for joint explorations and the key point here is the medium line is running through that on uh, the agreed zones. And they say, uh, Mr. Ebenaka, the Shirakaba, south of that, that's of course uh, the west of medium line. So it's nothing to do with Japan, they said. So we said, well, under the, the, the waters, when you drill some gas from Chinese side, ours might be pumped away. It's kind of straw, uh, the effect, we said. So, in the end, we agreed, yes, according, in accordance with Chinese law, they are going to develop it, and yet Japanese companies are going to join it. More recently, unfortunately, yes, uh, this hasn't come yet as uh, the treaty. They say it's too sensitive. Yes, that's okay. Uh, they say it's too sensitive, and yet it's, uh, we say uh, we have reconfirmed once and, uh, again and again between two summiteers between Japan and China, yes, this is an agreement. Well, some years has passed. In most recently, 
Uh, the Japanese side posted a kind of uh, the photos taken by Japanese self-defense forces that shows the lot of a uh, sort of a uh, uh, pipeline and lot of uh, the explorations are to be begun in the west of uh, uh, the medium line, and that pro platform's pictures came out, and they they agree, they said, well, this is nothing to do with agreement. Agreement, yes, we have it, is very important. So, as a matter of fact, they, are, they uh, reaffirmed this is an agreement. And as a first step, I think that we have to say, keep and keep, and keep saying, we should make it a kind of actual translations of that agreement into the reality. Now, my kind of idea today is for Abe to announce three things on this matter. Number one is... Yes, we have to have a, a kind of other emergency uh, prepared mechanisms. That there's no accidental sort of actions taken by the eyes, either side. So that's, this is rather immediate one. And long term, we should have a joint sort of uh, rules uh, that covers both East China Sea and South China Sea. And for those kind of maritime rooms, uh, rules for peace is a kind of idea. And third things is as a first step with regard to this is China Sea translated actual, into actual sort of agreement and let's explore jointly and that will certain, certainly tell the world yes Japan and China is cooperating. Now key point here as I said is that confrontation no way that also certainly covers South China Sea. Today of course uh, the China says entire South China Sea is in their waters. Certainly Vietnam opposed that, Philippines opposed that. And I hope that there is a, mat there is a kind of spirit of cooperation between Japan, China and ASEAN countries. We should explore the ways and we should press China. Let's work for the peace. You say peace, China, and we say peace, of course, and find out the kind of common rules. This is what we, I hope, really, that Abe will do all kinds of smart leadership to convince China, and of course, audiences is US, India, all over the world. That's my idea. I hope it is not just a dream, but it will be realized. Thank you very much. Situation uh, in South China Sea also a uh, source of serious concern for Japan and other Asian countries uh, because Japan and many other Asian countries are heavily relying on Middle East as a source of energy and for example uh, most of oil which Japan imports from Middle East comes through uh, South China Sea so if there is some crisis in South China Sea Japan and other Asian countries may have to find an alternative sea lane to uh, deliver energy from the Middle East to their uh, countries. And according to uh, some Japanese think tank estimate, uh, shipping cost from Middle East to Japan will go up by 200 and 300 billion Japanese yen per year. Uh, because Japan have to find uh, deliver a ship, you know, shipping cost because a sea lane will get longer uh, in case uh, Japan cannot use uh, South China Sea. But the impact of the South China Sea crisis is not only limited to an economic uh, domain, but more, moreover, uh, security implication is more important. If the uh, world community cannot do anything to prevent China from changing the status quo unilaterally. This may cause, uh, this may uh, US allies and partners in Asian country uh, may start to wonder to how much extent that they can rely on US leadership to maintain the stability in this region. Uh, also, China may think that 
uh, they can do the same, not only in South China Sea, but also in East China Sea, including Senkak Island. So if we cannot do anything to stop them, uh, this situation will, might get even worse in the near future. So question is, uh, what we can do and what we should do? Of course, uh, in order to uh, avoid unnecessary conflict, uh, both parties should restrain themselves from adopting provocative actions. So China have to be less assertive and stop uh, what they are doing right now. On the other hand, uh, other dispute, disputed countries like uh, Vietnam and Philippines also uh, sh should avoid to adapt, adapt assertive or in provocative actions. But what is going on right now is that China, it is China uh, which is now uh, initiate, which is uh, changing status quo very drastically by unilateral arterial action. So question is, after all, how to, what we can do to deter Chinese assertive action? Uh, in this sense, I think that after all, it's a balance of power. We have to fix the changing balance of power due to the Chinese military build-up to be more appropriate balance. In this sense, uh, I hope that U.S. shows leadership by taking visible action to deter China's action. Concretely speaking, as U.S. media, as reported by several U.S. media, uh, I watch, and other Asian countries, I think, watch very carefully whether Obama's, Obama administration will send military asset within the 12 nautical miles of artificial island which China are, is building. By doing it, uh, US and other allies and partner country should send a strong signal that we cannot regard uh, those artificial islands as a territory of China, legitimate territory of China. Sending that kind of message is very important. Thank you.